Hi friends, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss very important topic from engineering mathematics and that is called as gamma function. Let's first understand how we denote gamma function. Gamma of any number n is denoted by gamma n. And let's look at the definition of gamma n. Gamma n is defined as integral 0 to infinity e raised to minus x into x raised to n minus 1 dx where n has to be positive. I repeat the definition again gamma n is defined as integral 0 to infinity e raised to minus x into x raised to n minus 1 dx. Look at the limit of this integral 0 to infinity that means it is an improper integral. So this gamma function definition is going to help us to evaluate such kind of improper integrals. The purpose of defining gamma function is to evaluate this kind of improper integrals. Improper means the integral whose limits are like 0 to infinity. Now look at this integral. 0 to infinity e raised to minus x into x power is n minus 1. So power of x is n minus 1. So value of this integral is gamma n. Power is n minus 1. The value is gamma n. So if I have one integral, integral 0 to infinity e raised to minus x into x square dx, it's an improper integral, <coughs> which by normal methods I cannot evaluate. But using the definition of gamma function, I can evaluate. <coughs> if the power is n minus 1, the value of this improper integral is gamma n. If the power is 2, the value of this integral is going to be gamma 3. Uh, moving on further, let's now discuss how we calculate the value of this quantity gamma n. For that, I want you to remember two values, very, very important. Gamma 1 is 1 and gamma 1 by 2 is under root pi. So remember these two values. I'll discuss two cases. Case number 1. If n is a positive integer, if n is a positive integer, then you can use this technique. Gamma n is simply n minus 1 factorial. For example, gamma 5. What is going to be gamma 5? 5 is a positive integer, so its value is going to be 4 factorial. Gamma 10. Once again, the 10 is a positive integer, so value of gamma 10 is going to be 9 factorial. So it's very easy. If n is positive integer, gamma n is simply n minus 1 factorial. Case number two, if gamma is not a positive integer, if gamma is not a positive integer, gamma is a positive fraction. If gamma is positive fraction, then you're going to use this trick. Gamma n is given by n minus 1 into gamma n minus 1. Repeatedly. For example, gamma 7 by 2. Now what this technique is, 7 by 2 is a positive fraction, so I have to use this technique. It says one less number into gamma of that number. So 7 by 2, one less number, one less, that is 5 by 2, into gamma of same number, which is 5 by 2. Now this is again a positive fraction. So I'll be using the technique again. What is the technique? One less number into gamma of same number. So one less number that is 3 by 2 into gamma of same number 3 by 2. Oh, this is again a positive fraction. So I got to repeat this technique again. So 3 by 2, 1 less than 3 by 2 is 1 by 2 into gamma of 1 by 2. Which is, this is very important. What is gamma 1 by 2? I should remember gamma 1 by 2 is root pi. So I can end up by writing here root pi. And that is the answer or the rather value for gamma 7 by 2. This technique is called as recurrence formula and you know you may not write in these four steps you can write in single step and how gamma 7 by 2 what you do one less number 5 by 2 one less number 3 by 2 one less number 1 by 2 and when you reach 1 by 2 you end up by writing a root pi. See, take one more example. Gamma 9 by 2. One less number, 7 by 2. One less number, 5 by 2. 
one less number three by two one less number one by two if you reach one by two you write root pi and that is the value of gamma of nine by two now reflection formula again this is very important formula for gamma function now look at the formula it is gamma n into gamma 1 minus n that is pi divided by sine n pi two things are important first of all two gamma functions are multiplied and quantity inside first gamma function and quantity inside second gamma function when i add those two their sum is going to be one so you think of reflection formula whenever you see two gamma functions are multiplied and the quantities inside the gamma function their total comes out to be one example <coughs> gamma one by four into gamma three by four the first i notice this is product of two gamma function secondly this quantity that is one by four and this quantity that is three by four their total is four by four which is one so I can apply reflection formula here and what the formula is pi divided by sine n pi so it is going to be pi divided by sine n pi n is 1 by 4 so 1 by 4 into pi that is pi by 4 and what is value of sine pi by 4 that is 1 by root 2 obviously it is going to be root 2 pi so that's reflection formula now let's move on and solve some important problems on gamma function I'll be classifying uh, problems on gamma function into various types so that you can uh, easily understand them and master them well. So first I'll discuss type 1 question. How you identify type 1 question that is very important. There will be one integral whose limits are 0 to infinity. Limits are 0 to infinity that means it is an improper integral. There will be some function here into e raised to minus fx. What is crucial here is presence of this function e raised to minus fx and the limit 0 to infinity. So when you see these two features, what you're going to do is substitute f of x as t. Let's do it practically. I got an example whose limits are 0 to infinity and I see one crucial function e raised to minus fx. So I put fx as t. In this case, cube root of x as t which is x raised to 1 by 3 st so i can write x as t raised to 3 this is very important then i differentiate the derivative of x is dx and this is 3 t square dt so after substitution cube root of x will be replaced by t and dx will be replaced by 3 t square dt and x will be replaced by t cube and what about the limits limits has to be changed so here all limits are in terms of x so x value is 0 and upper limit x value is infinity so what is going to be t we know what is t t is x raised to 1 by 3 so if x is 0 the lower limit the new value of t will be 0 raised to 1 by 3 that is 0 and when upper limit x becomes infinity the value of t is going to be infinity raised to 1 by 3 that is infinity so these are all limits 0 to infinity in terms of x and these are new limits in terms of t so after substitution everything gets converted in terms of t and limits are also written in terms of t so let's put in the new limits so after substitution it is 0 to infinity x x is t cube so t cube under root sign and this quantity is simply t so t is e raised to minus t and what is dx dx is 3 t square dt now 3 is constant that i can shift outside and t cube under root t cube under root is written as t cube raised to 1 by 2 which is t raised to 3 by 2 so this is t raised to 3 by 2 into e raised to minus 2 into t square 
Now this and this I can combine using law of indices. So t raised to 3 by 2 into t raised to 2. Their powers will be added. So it is going to be t raised to 7 by 2. So e raised to minus t and these two if I combine it is t raised to 7 by 2. Now look at this it is into the gamma function form now. 0 to infinity e raised to minus x into x raised to n minus 1. What was gamma function? 0 to infinity e raised to minus x into x raised to n minus 1 dx and that was gamma n. Power is n minus 1 so value is gamma n. Here power is 7 by 2 so value of this integral will be gamma 9 by 2. See, the power of x is n minus 1. So the value of this improper integral is gamma n, 1 more than the power. Power here is 7 by 2. So value of this improper integral will be gamma 7 by 2 plus 1, 1 more number, plus 1. So 7 by 2 plus 1, that is 9 by 2. Now gamma 9 by 2 using recurrence formula. We discussed recurrence formula. So one less number that is 7 by 2. One less number that is 5 by 2. One less number that is 3 by 2. One less number that is 1 by 2. And once we reach 1 by 2, we end up by writing root pi. So you can simplify this further to get the value. So in type 1 question, what is important is look at the limits of integration. Limits of integration are 0 to infinity. There will be some function here and you have e raised to minus fx dx. In this case, we put fx as t. Look at this example once again. I've got a limit integral whose limits are 0 to infinity. There is some term. Then you have e raised to minus fx. So what I do, I put this fx as t. Cube root of x as t, that means x raised to 1 by 3 is t. What is important here is to write x. x is t cube. Now I differentiate, I get dx and this is 3t squared dt. When you substitute, it is very, very important to change the limits of integration. Earlier, the limits are values of x. The lower limit is 0. The upper limit is infinity. But after substitution, the limits will be in terms of t. So when x is 0, t is 0. When x is infinity, t is infinity. So 0 to infinity coincidentally remains 0 to infinity after substitution. So the new integral will be 0 to infinity. Now what is x? Remember after substitution, each and every term should be converted in terms of t. So what is x? x I can replace it as t cube. So the square root of t cube, e raised to minus cube root of x is t. And what is dx? dx is 3t square dt. Then I apply law of indices at these two places. It gives me t raised to 7 by 2. This term as it is. Moment I reach this step, I recollect this is gamma function 0 to infinity e raised to minus x into x raised to n minus 1. So 0 to infinity e raised to minus t into t raised to 7 by 2. Whatever is power here, that is crucial. Power is n minus 1. So value of this gamma of integral is gamma n. So power here is 7 by 2. So value of this improper integral is gamma 9 by 2. And we already know how to evaluate gamma 9 by 2. So friends, only this much for today's video. I'll be putting more videos on gamma function sequentially. More important problems will be discussed and different types of problems will be discussed on gamma function. So please like this particular video and subscribe to this channel to study gamma function completely. And remember, after gamma function, we are going to discuss beta function. See you later. Bye-bye and take care.